This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Sometimes people stir up the dead. One of the most common ways the dead get stirred up is an attempt to communicate with them. Oftentimes, the portal of communication is, insert the blank here, everyone's saying it out loud anyway, a Ouija board. And if you are communicating with the dead through the Ouija board, sometimes you don't know, in fact, almost any time, you don't know exactly who you're going to get. Some may request a loved one, some may request a famous person who passed on, and some who don't take it very seriously and don't understand the possible consequences, will ask for a demon. Not the best choice. Spoiler alert. When you do get your demon, and it starts infesting your home and your life, what do you do about it? That is where our next story ends, is asking what do you do about it. But how did they get there? How did the demon enter the home to begin with? Take a listen. I feel it's time to spill all the weird things that have been happening in my life. Because no one seems to care. A couple of years ago, a friend of mine and I would mess around with our homemade Ouija boards, blindfolding ourselves and recording the answers to our questions to prove neither one of us was full of shit. She eventually convinced me to do this thing called the Midnight Man Ritual, which is important because I think it has something to do with what's going on now, as recent as this month. The ritual involves inviting a demon into your home through your front door with some blood rubbed onto a piece of paper with your name in rune. If you're asking why I was down to do something so stupid, I'm sorry to say the answer is I guess I was bored and I thought it was just some silly game. I used to live in an apartment complex where the other side of my backyard was a forest lawn cemetery in Cypress, California, so that for sure adds extra creepy points to this story. At this point, I'd like to mention that I've had sleep paralysis since I was little. I remember the first time it happened. I was dreaming and sort of realized I was waking up. I was exerting every ounce of energy just to barely open my eyelids. It's the most frustrating thing in the world. Anyways, this next part started as recently as this year, but the more I think about it, the more I can remember it happening as early as high school, where I get this feeling in my sleep, almost like that feeling that you're falling, only it feels like I'm being pulled or sucked horizontally towards my feet, and it wakes me up sometimes. It's like a quick jerking motion. About a year ago, I was able to fully open my eyes, only this time I wasn't being jerked when I was pulled. It was so slow and I wasn't dreaming because there was hair in front of my face moving as I was being pulled. I saw the room as I was being pulled and I had to leave my room and sleep with my mom. I was very conscious and terrified. The first time the sleep occurrence has happened, I remember the moment I transitioned into REM sleep. My door slammed so hard that a screw popped out of my dad. He came into the room asking why I was slamming my doors and stopped dead in his tracks when he saw me in bed. The windows were closed, the heater was on. And if you think that's weird, just hold tight because it relates to something that happened this month. Another time I was able to open my eyes, I saw someone tall standing in my bedroom doorway. I was falling into the red sheets of my bed, struggling to get up to the light. It was identical to what happened in the movie, Get Out. When the man character goes into his subconscious, it tripped me out when I saw that scene and gave me an instant flashback. All right, the next part is the weirdest thing I've seen with my own two eyes. It happened this month. I was sleeping, minding my own damn business, and I heard what I thought was my cat because she sometimes will sit in the doorway of my bedroom door and kick the door into the wall. I'm tearing up typing this. It doesn't sound that scary yet, but the feeling I remember, it just messes me up. Anyways, I look at my bedroom door. My room was a mess. The door handle had been broken off, so we kept clothes stuffed between the door and door frame to keep it closed, and the heavy, giant bucket to keep it shut. It's 4 a.m., all the windows and doors are closed, heaters are on, and what awoke me was a repetitive loud slamming sound of my door. I looked over. 
And to my horror, the door is rapidly opening and closing from being closed shut to slamming the bucket against my bedroom wall extremely fast. This went on for four minutes. There's no explanation for this bam, bam, bam. Just so fast, I'll never forget it. When it stopped, it was closed and I bolted out of my apartment and slept at my neighbor's house. The next part my mom told me about this morning and makes me uncomfortable because we're dreaming about the same things now. We back up and start from the beginning. That girl I used to play Ouija boards with was in a dream. I had last week. It was extremely short and very unsettling. We were sitting on my couch laughing hysterically with just a feeling of pure love and joy. She's laughing, glances in front of us at my kitchen and does a double take. The mood instantly changes to pure fear and malice. She screams and makes an unnatural scream and points straight ahead and I see a woman with long black hair, scary eyes and a scary smile, a fucked up face and teeth, just a mess. She has half of her face and body behind my kitchen wall, smiling and staring right at us. Beth was screaming until I woke up. The dream felt like 30 seconds. My mom didn't wake up until 1 p.m. today, which is weird for her. She's up at 5 a.m. every day. I live with my mom and dad, who are rarely home. I understand that my mom doesn't like the relationship that we're in. It's weird. We rarely interact. So the way she was talking to me before she told me about the dream is very strange, as we are not close. She came into the living room all groggy and tired and sat down on the couch next to me, which she never does. She said she had to tell me something, and I was very intrigued. She said she had sleep paralysis, which she used to have all the time. Hers hasn't happened in almost a decade. She said it felt like someone holding her down every time. She said she thought this dream was real, and she had never had a dream more lifelike. She had a dream that we were older and had been living with a woman our entire lives. She had a baby and would run around the house and we'd barely see her because she's so fast. She'd zoom right by. Reminds me of shadow people that some people complain about in the corner of their eyes. Then one day we told her to leave. She had slowly turned evil over time and terrorized us. The part that messes with me the most is she described the same messed up smile from my dream. Weird things happen so often in my house now, I don't even look up, like when a painting falls in my kitchen windowsill. A TV turns on. It's harmless, I think. Love to talk to someone who knows what this could all be about. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Want a commercial-free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories? Sign up at Apple Podcast right now and try it for three days free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories.